It is now Sam Howell season in D.C. for the Washington Commander, or at least we think so. After starting at 7-5-1 and one with the playoffs within arm's reach, the Commanders have not won a game since November and have since fell to 7-8-1 and one and were eliminated from playoff contention this Sunday with a loss and a horrendous loss to the Cleveland Browns in which starting quarterback number 11, I'm not going to say his name because I'm going to I'm going to deter from saying the names of either of the quarterbacks ahead of Sam Howell on this roster because neither are the answer and I never want to see either play a game for in burgundy and gold ever again so we're just going to refer to the other two quarterbacks on the roster as number 11 and number four I'll probably not even say number I'll just say 11 or four 11 shut the bed on Sunday and in the 17 weeks leading up to this week 18 game of non-climactic obsoleteness, the two quarterbacks ahead of Sam Howell on the roster have managed to throw for 23 touchdowns and turn the ball over 24 times. And there were a ton more turnover worthy plays from both guys. So you know who turns the ball over that many times in a season? A rookie. So if you're going to get rookie play and rookie mistakes from your starter and your backup, why the hell not go to the rookie 22 year old quarterback who is more talented than both of the guys ahead of him on the roster? Sam Howe. Just a shade under six foot one, 220, has the muscle and the build to go with it. So it counters the whole six foot undersized quarterback thing. Just a shade under six one is tall enough in this league, especially when you're not 180 pounds, you know? Unless you're that small, then you get questioned for your ability all of a sudden, like people are doing with Bryce Young and just ignoring the fact of how great Bryce Young actually is. Back to Sam Howe, topic of the conversation for today's video. He should be the unquestioned starter for the final game of the Washington Commanders season going against the Dallas Cowboys, who are now suddenly playing for the NFC East and a possibility of being the number one seed in the NFC if some things go their way on top of beating us in the season finale that was now moved to 425 p.m. on Sunday, January 8th at FedEx Field, the whiteout game. We're going to be in all white, white tops, white bottoms. We're going to be in all white to celebrate our ascension into heaven in the Dan Snyder era. The Dan Snyder era leaves. And when I say heaven, I mean heaven in the gates of hell, because that's what it's been the 22 years that we've been owned by Dan Snyder. All white as Dan Snyder's football career as an owner ascends into the heaven's gates of hell. But back to the quarterback, number 14 formerly number seven in college, Sam Howe. This is a dual threat quarterback, not just a quarterback with sneaky athleticism or he can scoot a little bit for a white boy like a lot of people will pigeonhole a guy like him or they'll pigeonhole him into saying he's Baker Mayfield because they're the same size and they're both white guys with five o'clock shadow beards and look like they're a member of the village people. They don't really play exactly similarly it's an easy trope to throw on him though sam howe was a guy projected to be a top 10 five and possibly the number one overall pick in the 2022 draft after two strong years he started in north carolina came in as a true freshman and threw for 38 touchdowns and over 3,000 yards in his first year with the team he threw eight less touchdowns in his sophomore year but also he improved in many major statistics during that season, threw for 30 touchdowns. And if he would have come out after his sophomore year, he's easily a first round pick. His junior year, his numbers dipped. He went into the 20s for touchdowns. He threw 24 touchdowns and he threw 11 interceptions, which was more than the former two year. But since he had to put the whole fucking team on his back after losing four weapons to the draft, four, he lost De'Ami Brown, Daz Newsom on the outside, Javante Williams and Michael Carter, second and fourth round picks in the backfield, who both were pass catching threats and ballers out of the backfield. Two very talented guys, four very talented weapons, lost them and his O-line was shaky. His numbers dropped to 24 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. But what that did was make Sam Howe play a little bit of hero ball and 
His first two years in college, he ended up running the ball 186 times. His final year in college, his junior year, he ran the ball 183 times. And he ran that motherfucker for 830 yards and 11 touchdowns. So he had 35 touchdowns still in his down year. I will take that here. That is a dual threat quarterback. We're talking about a guy who in Sun Valley High School in North Carolina ran for over 3,000 yards and 60 touchdowns and threw for over 145 yards as a high school dual threat quarterback and at North Carolina we saw more of the same the boy can run run the boy ain't sneaky athletic he's very athletic he picks his run lanes well he runs with power he lowers the shoulder and the boom on guys no I don't need my quarterback doing those things but it is nice to see a quarterback with a running back mentality when the ball is in his hand because the way that our offensive line is set up here it's poverty it's dreck it's zilch and We need a quarterback that can run. So first, I'd like to note that two things can be true, just like the theme of my video on Sunday about Ron Rivera, Ronald Eugene, paddle boat Ron, as my boy Jalen calls him. This game on Sunday versus the Dallas Cowboys does not mean He's the answer if he has a good game. And it does not mean he's a bust if he has a bad game. And I want fans to be able to look through the lens of an objective, contextual football fan. Sunday does not mean he's the answer. And it does not mean he's not the answer. It means that we should see, we need to see more. We need to see more than a one-game sample size. That's why I, like many others who were called dumb, because we wanted to see Sam Howell weeks ago. Let me put this let me put this into perspective for you. You've sprayed the ball around the field between two quarterbacks and turned the ball over 25 times. If we lost more fumbles, we'd be closer to 30. We watched rookie mistakes from two 30-year-olds who shouldn't be starting in this league at this point. Why not see the rookie? When Carson Wentz broke his finger in Chicago and they went to number four. The plan at that point should have immediately pivoted to let the backup play. But you know what we should do? We should prep the rookie to take over at some point. Because while he was taken in the fifth round and in the 2000s, not one fifth round pick is translated into a franchise quarterback. We were stuck with the situation of realizing that the most talented quarterback on the roster is the enigma. It's the rookie. It's the question mark that none of us have seen yet. His game actually combines the strength of both of the quarterbacks before him, 11 and 4. Number 11, has a cannon. Not really much shit else to his game. Number four, can move and has moxie. Sam Howe has moxie. Can really move, uses his legs to his advantage, and has a cannon. He is like the unborn child of four and 11, except he's talented. He's really talented. And he had a really impressive college career for a Division I ACC school, not in North Dakota or at Old Dominion. But we're not talking about the other guys. Today is about number 14, Sam Howe, and how this could be a big game, but we shouldn't take too much from this game. But Ron was asked yesterday, is Sam Howe going to get the start versus Dallas on Sunday? Because you told us we're going to evaluate talent. Ron didn't even know we were going to be eliminated, that we could be eliminated. There was a chance or a possibility of it on Sunday. So do you think Ron's going to have the answer of, am I going to play Sam Howell on Sunday, the day after that game? No, because Ron, I could see Ron trotting one of the other guys out there just because if Sam has a good game, they're going to say, why the fuck did it take the last week of the season to see this guy play football and on the other side of the coin you put him out there and he's trash they're gonna say you've had 17 weeks to prepare a quarterback who came from a pro style system at unc for game appearance why does he look like garbage 
after 17 weeks in your system. You know, both sides of those coins look bad on Ron, but fuck all that. We need to see Sam Howe. We need to see what he can do, but we don't need to lose our minds over what he can do. But literally, he's the only reason why I'm interested in watching this game on Sunday, especially versus a good Dallas defense. We have a bad O-line, but a quarterback with legs and that actually uses his legs to the best of their ability can mask those deficiencies and make things happen. I like what I saw from Sam Howell in preseason. Someone's going to say he didn't throw for any passing touchdowns in the season. Well, you know what he did do? He led the league in passing yards in preseason. He led six scoring drives in preseason. He had two rushing touchdowns in the preseason, and he threw with touch time and, and a bit of anticipation. A, TTA. The A, the a in TTA anticipation was something that there was a red flag for in college. He didn't really throw with anticipation. He waited till guys were open and broke free to throw the ball. Well, mostly because a lot of his yards came through deep balls, and he throws a beautiful deep ball. It looks like prime Russ and Seattle moon balls when he throws the deep ball but he didn't throw with much anticipation in college especially his junior year after he lost his two good receivers his final year in college it was just him Ty Chandler and Joshua Downs versus the world but Sam still made things happen I liked what I saw for him in preseason he gets the ball out quick and he has an absolute rocket the ball flies out his hand and doesn't sit in the air for an hour like number fours and we should have saw Sam Howe weeks ago. A good coaching staff, even in the crux of a faux playoff run, you know, because every year, you know, this Washington team is capable of a Disney Channel Mickey Mouse win streak. And we went on one and a half Mickey Mouse win streaks this year. And there was nothing I saw over those weeks that I didn't think the rookie could do. So if you thought it was foolish to play a rookie, I would like you to take your eyes and point them to the Pittsburgh Steelers with Kenny Pickett. You can easily look at his touchdown to interception ratio and say six touchdowns to nine picks. He ain't doing shit. But if you actually watch the fucking games, you will see that Kenny Pickett has grown substantially and marginally from the first time we seen him earlier this year he's even been injured twice and he's still grown from that and now we enter week 18 the Steelers are staring the playoffs and a winning record in the face and you want to know why because they have Mike Tomlin running the show over there and Mike Tomlin and the Steelers are a class organization who knows how to develop draft picks and that's why they've been relevant for the entire duration of the existence of the NFL Desmond Ritter started three games he hasn't shut the bed yet the only rookie quarterback that's really shut the bed since he's got in is Malik Willis and Malik Willis was a raw prospect coming in Sam Howe comes from a pro style system. Sam Howe produced in college. Sam Howe looked good in training camp. Sam Howe looked good in the preseason. And nothing in front of him is better than him or talented than him. He was drafted in the fifth round. Fifth rounders do not turn into franchise quarterbacks for the majority of the existence of football. But I think we have a bit of a special case here in Sam Howe, considering he was not supposed to be the sixth quarterback selected. He wasn't supposed to go after guys like Bailey Zappi and Matt Corral. But he ended up there and we ended up getting him with the 144th overall pick. And it's time we see what the boy is made of. One thing I would like to point out as well, even if he lights it up on Sunday, you definitely bring I mean, he's definitely going to be on the team. He has a four year contract, but you definitely bring him back to compete with a guy that you draft early. You bring him back to compete because at minimum, the guy you drafted at the fifth round should at least be your backup. You did not draft this quarterback in the fifth round with expectations for him to be inactive and in street clothes every week. You want him to be dressed and as a backup and ready to go because he's he could be one snap away from getting in the game. But Ron and our awful offensive coordinator, Scott Turner, I have no faith that they are ready to develop a quarterback. And I think they are cognizant of that fact. And I think that is why we haven't seen Sam Howe. I think it's more so them not having the ability to develop him and put together a game plan that he can go out and execute more so than him not progressing through these 17 weeks so far. It's a clown show coaching staff 
that we need to see the final days of. But we got one game left, and it is Sam Howell's season for the finale of the Washington Commanders football season. And then we're off to the off season where it's going to be fireworks. It's going to be an own, a change of ownership. And I'm ready for it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm definitely ready for it. I also want to say prayers to DeMar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills. That was one of the more terrifying things I've ever seen in a football game. Prayers to him. And thank you, NFL. And round of applause, Roger Goodell, for stopping that game. That is the only call to make after something as terrifying and traumatic, PTSD causing as an event like that. And if you disagree, you're a fucking idiot because there's no other way to feel about what we witnessed last night with DeMar Hamlin. We're praying for your recovery as you're fighting for your life. Man, blessings to you and your family, DeMar Hamlin, man. But that's all I got for right now. Until next time, like, comment, and subscribe, and come ramble with your boy. Deuces.